Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'm going to be sowing two types of hardy agaves here. So th these agaves are actually hardy to a reasonable amount of frost, maybe minus 5, minus 10. So in slightly warmer temperate locations these could do quite well. But what's especially ex exciting about these for me is that they come from areas that are high in altitude. So they are quite capable of, of dealing with the cooler temperatures that are in my part of the world, which is North Scotland. So we've got two types here. We've got this one here which is um, a bit more unusual. This is the agave atrovirans. I'm not sure how you say the second bit, but I think it's a oxica or axica jungle giant. And this as well is the other one. This is uh, agave montana. Agave montana is quite well known. That comes from northern Mexico. That goes up to 3,000 meters. This one likes it a little bit drier though. It's more like a normal agave but it can handle more, more wet weather and cold weather than, than most agave, so it's got a reasonable chance of surviving in my area if I have somewhere that's maybe near the coast or I keep it, uh, take it in the winter and just protect it from the worst of the frosts. But I do have to be careful with wet winters with that one. This one, however, is a bit more interesting. So the other one was from northeast Mexico. This one's from the south of Mexico in, that, in actually the district that it gets, it gets its name from. Again, this grows up to 3,000 meters or just over in, in altitude. So it's a high altitude plant. But this one grows in almost like cloud forest. So it's, it's right at the top of the mountains where there's always clouds, lots of rain. It does have a dry season and a wet season, but it does get a lot of rainfall. So this can handle the wetter winters a lot better than most agave. So this one will be quite interesting. Also, this variety of agave is actually the largest agave in the world. It grows to an absolutely huge size. So be interesting to see how this one grows for me. Hopefully it might grow quite quick as well, as it's a high altitude plant that likes damper weather. And that's pretty much what Scotland's like. It's quite cool summers, quite damp weather uh, most of the time. And our winters aren't too hard, especially near the coast. So these ones, as I say, I'm going to be growing them as small kind of potted plants for the first few years and then once they're a little bit more established a little bit larger then I might try planting one or two outside in a, in a location that's a little bit drier a bit more protected from the hardest of frost and I'll just see how they do so as I say these are seeds the only real way you can uh, uh, propagate most agave is through seeds because once they flower they only flower actually once in their life but once they flower the whole plant dies it produces thousands and thousands of, of seeds and that's how you propagate it some species have be propagated through pups. I'm just going to go ahead and sow these. And what I like to do when I'm sowing seeds is I like to use takeaway tubs. I find these perfect size. I can also seal them up as well to keep it nice and humid and it has that mini greenhouse effect. So the first one I go with is agave actravirans. Now the seeds in these two are very similar to each other so you can definitely mix them up quite easily and they, they are quite similar to, to many other kind of uh, flowers and, and plants in this in this family. You can see they're very flat, a bit like amaryllis seeds actually. Very flat seeds, but they're reasonable size so you can hand sow them quite easily. So with these agave, they do germinate better if they're exposed to light. So I'm just going to place them on the surface of the compost. I'm not going to bury them. I'm just going to space them out as well so they have enough space. Now I'm using coir here, which is a sterile medium without any fertilizer added. So they should germinate quite well. But the only problem with coir is it's very water retentive. I'm just using it for the germination process. Once these have germinated, I'll be transplanting them quite early on in their life into a much grittier growing substrate, something that drains much better because uh, if they grew for too long in coir they'd probably get problems with, with rotting off as it is a bit too wet for them. So it's just for the germination process and after that I'm going to be transplanting them into more like a succulent and cactus mix. And now so the second one, one of the nice things about the takeaway tubs as well is you have this rough area on the plastic there which you can use uh, a pen or a pencil to write on so very easy to, to label them so you don't get mixed up. Especially with plants like agave here, they're going to look virtually identical um, for the first year or so of their life. There's not going to be much difference between the two varieties, so it'll be hard to tell which is which. So I definitely don't want to get them mixed up. So same again, I'm just going to scatter these along the surface. As I said, these do need light to germinate, so I'm not going to cover them up. What you can do, instead of the method I'm doing, you can cover them in, in a very thin layer of soil or, or sand. Just enough that they're covered and they stay nice and damp but not too deep that it blocks the light. You want to have a little bit of light transmission. You will get light coming through a few millimeters of soil. So even if you completely cover the seed with soil, you'll still get some light coming through. So that's them now all sown. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to water the, the coir, make sure it's nice and damp for them because they'll need that humidity and moisture to start the germination process. I'm then going to put them on a warm windowsill. These are high altitude mountainous plants, so they don't need a really high temperatures to germinate, but I'll try and keep them between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius 
put them in a nice sunny windowsill with high light levels. I'm in North Scotland so the direct sun is probably never going to get this too hot that these are going to be cooked. But if I was in a warmer part of the world with strong sunshine, I would definitely be keeping it out of the midday sun because that would be too hot for it and probably cook these poor little seedlings. So that's all for now. I'll see you guys in a few weeks and I'll see what the germination rate's like. So it's now two weeks later and as you can see we have some of the first plants starting to germinate. So the ones that were the fastest was the, the agave montana. This is the tray of the agave montana. You can see there's one here which is already starting to touch the top of the tray. The, interestingly there wasn't any germination at all for the first probably just under two weeks and then they've all started to germinate at once pretty much so you can see here we've got several other ones starting to germinate all dotted around and I'll show you the ones from the agave draverans and so how they're growing so to say slightly behind but not much really you can still see good germination starting on a lot of these seeds so it's now ready to plant these out as I said earlier in the video it's quite a wet mix I've used it's just pure coir so these won't grow well in there if I leave them because they need a well drained soil as they are succulents so these are the trays I'm going to be planting them into they're a bit smaller than a nine centimeter pot each individual cell um, but they're reasonable size so these plants can probably stay in here for a year or two I don't expect them to be very fast growing plants but we'll see how fast they do grow they should grow faster than your average uh, succulent because they are eventually quite large succulents so these are the, the trays they're going into anyway and the mix I've used because although these are of agave plants and they are succulents they grow as I say before they grow on, uh, on mountainous areas where they actually have quite a lot of rainfall or at least quite a lot compared with most succulents so the mix I've gone for is a free draining mix but I've just let it be a little bit less free draining than I would do for most cacti and succulents so I've just used some of my garden soil my garden soil is very sandy and free draining anyway I've then added a little bit of co compost just to make sure there's a bit of feed in there and a bit more water retention and then I've added quite a lot of perlite as well just to make sure it's a loose mix and free draining so this should grow quite well in here now I have to be quite careful the whole time I'm doing this not to mix the two up because once they're mixed up it'll be quite hard to tell which is which so I'm just going to get the seedlings and get them ready to, to come out into these pots so I'll need to be very careful they're going to be very delicate at this stage to be careful not to damage them so this one for example I'll show you how I'll be doing it I'll be just getting some tweezers or a pencil I'm not going to be pinching it with the tweezers it's just that this is a handy size to use I'm just going to be putting it to the side of the plant and then pushing up from underneath, make, I'm pushing it right down to the bottom of the container so I don't know I'm not breaking any of the root off. Gently pushing it up and it's very gently picking it up with my fingers once I know it's completely loose. And then what I'll be doing is I'll just be making a hollow in the in the potting mix like this. Very carefully placing this in and just burying it just a little bit deeper than it was in the compost in the original section because these were grown on the surface, so they're very shallow roots at the moment. I wanted to plant them a little bit deeper. And this section here, that, that little green section that I've buried slightly, it will actually keep pushing up. As you can see, this one here, it will push up slightly. So I'm going to bury it slightly. I do have to be careful though, if I bury it too much, there is a risk that they could, they could rot, so I do have to be careful with them. Now that's all the agave is now separately planted up. So there was six from each tray that had germinated quite nicely, and I can see there's some others that are just starting to germinate. So I'll probably get probably 10 or maybe a bit more from each tray, so I'm expecting close to 100% germination. They should hopefully all survive from this stage. Hopefully there won't be any damping off or, or the damage to the roots. This is a possibility if I keep it too wet, but hopefully with the free draining soil that shouldn't be an issue. So I'll see you guys with an update. It could be a year or two. It depends how fast these really grow and if they all survive. What I'll be doing is I'll be putting these on a sunny windowsill. I'll be keeping them nice and, and warm and well watered. But I have to be careful not to overwater them as they are susceptible to rotting off. And we'll see how they do. And as I say, I'll probably be a little while till I have another update. It just depends how fast they grow.